Hello grade 10 learners, have a nice day! Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'll be discussing to you about how to find the x and y intercepts of polynomial functions. Before we go on further, let us try to understand first what is an x and y intercept. X-intercept is a point where the graph intersects or touches the x-axis. The x-intercepts of a graph of polynomial function are the x-values when y is equal to 0. They are also called the zeros of the polynomial function. On the other hand, the y-intercept is a point where the graph intersects or touches the y-axis. The y-intercept of a graph of a polynomial function is the y-value when x is equal to 0. Now let's have the example. Find the x and y-intercepts of the given polynomial function. Okay, number 1. y is equal to quantity of x minus 2 times quantity of x minus 3, times quantity of x plus 1, times quantity of 2x plus 1. The given polynomial function is in factored form. So if it's in factored form, it's very easy to solve for the x-intercept. Okay, solving for the x-intercept, we have to let y equals 0. So copy first the given function, then after that, substitute y with 0. So this y variable will become 0. So we have now polynomial equation. To solve for a polynomial equation, we have to equate its factor with 0 and solve for x. So copy quantity of x minus 2. Just remove the grouping symbol, so we have x minus 2, and equate it with 0. Next, this one, x minus 3 is equal to 0. Third factor, x plus 1 is equal to 0. And the last, we have 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. Next, we have to solve for x. Okay, first, so negative 2, transpose the right side of the equation, so it becomes positive 2. This is now the first value of our x. Next, negative 3 transpose to the right side, so it becomes positive 3. Then, positive 1 transpose, it becomes negative 1. Then, on the last, we have here 2x plus 1. So, first transpose 1 to the right side, so we have here negative 1. Then, we still have here 2. So what are we going to do is we have to divide both sides of the equations by 2 to solve for x. So 2x divided by 2, that is equal to x. And of course, negative 1 divided by 2 is equal to negative 1 half. So this is now the fourth value of x. So these are the x-intercepts of the given polynomial function. So we have to write the x-intercepts are 2, this one, then 3, negative 1, and negative 1 half. What does it mean? This means that the graph will pass through the x-axis at the point. The corresponding point for this is 2, 0. Why we have 2, 0? Because this is the point where the value of r y is equal to 0. And remember that a point has x and y value, or the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So we have to write first the value of x, then the value of r y. Next, we have 3, 0, negative 1, 0, and negative 1 half 0. So our y coordinate here is always 0 since we let y is equal to 0. Now we have to solve for the y-intercept. Solving for the y-intercept, that is the time wherein 
we let x is equal to 0. So, copy first the function. Next, substitute the variable x by 0. So, we have here quantity of 0 minus 2 times quantity of 0 minus 3 times quantity of 2 times 0 plus 1 times quantity of 0 plus 1. Then, we have to simplify further. Okay? Simplify first the terms inside the parentheses. So, 0 minus 2, that is negative 2. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. In here, we have 2 times 0 is 0 plus 1. So, we have here 1. And 0 plus 1 is 1. Then, we have to multiply. So, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6 times 1 is 6 times 1 is 6. Therefore, our y is equal to 6. So, this is now the value of our y-intercept. So, the y-intercept is 6. So, this means that the graph will pass through the y-axis at the point 0, 6. Okay? So, this time, our x is equal to 0. That's why we have here 0. And our y is 6. Remember that point okay, has always x and y coordinate so that's why for our point here we have 0 6 okay this is example number one where the given function is in factored form it's very easy to solve for the x and the y intercepts Now, let's have the second example. y is equal to 2x cubed minus 7x squared minus 7x plus 12. If you have observed, the given function is not in factored form, but it's in standard form. So, we have to make use of the rational root theorem. If in case you forget about that particular lesson, please go over my previous video about it. Okay, now, we have to solve for the x-intercept, that is when... We let y is equal to 0. So, the y variable will be substituted by 0. And we have now a polynomial equation. Next, we have to make use of the rational root theorem. So, our constant term, p, is equal to 12. Then, write all the factors of 12. So, the factors of 12 are plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, plus minus 4, plus minus 6, plus minus 12. Next, for our leading coefficient, we have here 2. That is the value of our q. And write all the factors of 2. We have plus minus 1, plus minus 2. For our possible roots, that is when we divide p over q. So we have plus minus 1 divided by plus minus 1. So we have plus minus 1. Next, plus minus 1 divided by plus minus 2, so we have plus minus 1 half. Next, plus minus 2 divided by plus minus 1, so we have plus minus 2. Then, plus minus 2 divided by plus minus 2 is plus minus 1, so no need to write it again. Next, plus minus 3 divided by plus minus 1, so we have plus minus 3. Plus minus 3 divided by plus minus 2 is plus minus 3 halves. Next, plus minus 4 divided by plus minus 1, so we have plus minus 4. Plus minus 4 divided by plus minus 2 is plus minus 2, so we no need to write again. Next, plus minus 6 divided by plus minus 1 is plus minus 6. Plus minus 6 divided by plus minus 2, so we already have here plus minus 3. And last, plus Minus 12 divided by plus minus 1 is plus minus 12. And plus minus 12 divided by plus minus 2 is plus minus 6. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do is we have to do a test using synthetic division. Okay, we have to test at 1. Where did we get 1 here? 1 of the possible roots. Okay. Using synthetic division, and if in case you forgot also about this lesson, please go over my previous video about synthetic division. So here, 1 
where did we get this one? One of the possible roots. Okay, two. This is the numerical coefficient of the given polynomial function. Two, and then we have here negative seven, then negative seven, and last is 12. So first bring down, bring down two, then multiply two, then one is two, negative seven plus two is negative five, negative five times one is negative five, negative seven plus negative five is negative 12, Negative 12 times 1 is negative 12. 12 plus negative 12 is 0. Since the remainder is 0, this part here is the remainder. Since the remainder is equal to 0, it means that 1 is a root or a 0 of this function. So this is the first value of our x-intercept. Now let's continue. We have to form the depressed equation. So where are we going to base our depressed equation? It's here. So we have 2x squared. Why we have 2 here as our degree? Since our degree here is 3 and it will be deducted by 1, so we have 2x squared. And then this one, minus 5x, minus 12. And it will be equated with 0. We have now quadratic equation. So how are we going to solve this quadratic equation? We have to solve this by factoring. And the easiest way to solve this by factoring is that we have to copy the literal coefficient of the quadratic term x squared as well as the linear term. Okay? Just copy only the x squared and this linear term negative 5x. Next, multiply 2 and negative 12. So 2 times negative 12, that is negative 24. Negative 24, and of course, it will be equated with 0. Next, we have to factor out x squared. Factors of x squared are x in x. And the factors of negative 24 that will give a sum of negative 5 are negative 8 and 3. Negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. But once we add negative 8 plus 3, that is equal to negative 5. So this is the factors of x squared minus 5x minus 24. But we are not here through. Since we have here the numerical coefficient of our quadratic term, the next thing we're coming to do is we have to divide the constant term of every factor. So this negative 8 will be divided by 2. And 3 also will be divided by 2. Where did we get 2? Coming from the numerical coefficient of the quadratic term. And the result will become... quantity of x minus 4. So, of course, 8 divided by 2 is 4. And this 2 will be written before the variable x. So, that's why we have here 2x and just copy the numerator 3. Okay, why is that? So, because we have to multiply this by 2. Excuse me. And once we multiply this by 2, this will become 2x plus 3. Just to shorten the solution, whatever be the denominator of the constant term, it will be written before the variable. Okay, that's why we have here 2x. And just copy the numerator. So we have now the factors of 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. After that, equate its factor with 0. So we have here x minus 4 is equal to 0. The other one, 2x plus 3 is equal to 0 and solve for x. So, negative 4 transpose, it becomes positive 4. The other one, 2x plus 3 and 3 will be transposed, it becomes negative 3. Then, divide both sides of the equation by 2 to solve for x. So, 2x 
divided by 2, that is equal to negative 3 divided by 2. Therefore, x is equal to negative 3 halves. So, we have now the values of our x-intercept. This is the first one, 1, and then 4, and then the third one is negative 3 halves. So, the x-intercepts are 1, 4, and negative 3 halves. This means that the graph will pass through the x-axis at the point 1, 0, 4, 0, negative 3 halves, 0. Now we're going to solve for our y-intercept, okay? That is when we let x that is equal to 0. So, be the function. This time, the variable x will be substituted by 0. So, 2 times 0 cubed minus 7 times 0 squared minus 7 times 0 plus 12. And of course, the answer for this because any number multiplied by 0 is 0, so we have here 0 minus 0 minus 0 plus 12. Or in other words, if the given function is in standard form, the value of the y-intercept is always the constant term, provided that the function is already in standard form. The value of the y-intercept is always the constant term. And the constant term that we have here is 12. Okay, so we have now the value of our y, which is equal to 12. This is the value of our y-intercept. So the y-intercept is 12. And this means that the graph will pass through the y-axis at 0, 12. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Kindly like and comment your questions or clarifications regarding the video in the comment box. Don't forget to share to other students for them to learn or master the lesson. And please don't forget to subscribe to be updated for more math lesson videos. And thank you also to all of you who have already subscribed to my channel. Before I end, let me share to one of the verses from the Bible. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Ephesians 6, verse 2. That's all for today, and God bless you all.